Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session. I'm here with Kara Cummings from Kara's Garden. Kara, hello. Hello. So good How to be here. How are you? <laughs> I am great. You are in your element exactly how I envision you all the time, <laughs> surrounded by greenery. Um, I love watching you do what you do. You are incredibly talented. You're incredibly inspiring. Uh, I also am obsessed with gardening and all things. Uh, so I, it is so cool to see how you've brought it and meshed it all together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a lifetime of bringing all of my favorite things uh, into a space that now gets to be my workspace. I'm so lucky. I know, aren't we? Um, so you took the, you came into my world in 2020. You took the immersion course in 2020, I believe. Um, and so I followed you since then and have just loved diving into your world, but I don't know much about your life before then. Can you tell us what you were doing before you found surface pattern design? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, it was, it was an interesting thing. Um, so my background is in nonprofit. I worked in environmental science and food justice and agriculture. So um, I did all of the nonprofit things um, for a long time, which includes bringing in all of your other skills. And I had been a botanical painter, gosh, for years and years, um, like 25 years. And it was always something I did on the side. So um, in 2019, I decided I was done with the, the nonprofit world. It was pretty stressful and I was getting pretty burned out. And I had decided uh, I was gonna take my art kind of side hustle and go full time with it. Um, so it coincided with turning 50 and feeling like, okay, I'm ready for something new and something different. And I really want it to be art. And I had this wonderful, um, really supportive partner who said, yeah, he's like, let's do it. This, I think we can, we can make this happen. Um, if it takes a couple of years, we can do it. So I love that. Yeah. It makes such a big difference. Yeah. Tell me about the moment. Did you, do you remember the moment that you discovered surface pattern design or like how you could take your botanical artwork that you've been doing and kind of turn it into um, a career? Yeah, so part of the process of, um, as I was thinking, I put a lot of, you know, I put a lot of thought obviously into this. Uh, it was a big move. And I knew I could paint. I'd been painting with watercolors forever. Um, and I, I was very confident um, that, you know, I could continue to do that. But I also knew that selling one painting at a time was not going to be a, a business for me. It wasn't going to work. I needed to think about it um, on a larger scale. And I think it, I didn't know, I don't think I even knew the term surface pattern design. Um, I knew that there were a lot of really beautiful things on surfaces for sure. Right. <laughs> and I, I made things, but I didn't know how to do a repeat or anything like that. So um, I can't remember how I came across you. It may have been through Emily Jeffords. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I kind of thought there's got to be a way for me to take the skill I have and do at least one more thing, but probably a lot more things with it. And so that's how I came across uh, you and surface pattern design. So I'm assuming that you were primarily paint and paper, right? Yeah. So tell me about what challenges did you experience as you kind of wrapped your head around moving that into a digital space or did you have any challenges? Um, what was the learning curve like, you know, when you're so talented uh, from a fine art perspective and then you start to learn how to, you know, maneuver your art in new ways? Yeah, I... Um... So I actually, I knew how to use Illustrator. Uh, I mean, I say that, I thought I knew how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the biggest things I learned. Um, so I could sort of move around in it. I was pretty comfortable in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, but a lot of, you know, I, I did a lot of like marketing kinds of things like in my job. So I knew I was comfortable on the computer. The biggest challenge was taking a watercolor painting 
uh, bringing it into Illustrator and vectorizing it and realizing it's not, those two things are not the same. There's, I had to learn to take my skills and reimagine what I was gonna do with them. Um, yeah. And I, I struggled. I, the first time I took immersion, I have to say I struggled a bit. Like I, I wanted it to look just the same. Um, mm -hmm. You are this incredible teacher, and uh, through the process of you know learning from you, I was able to I would say expand my mind and my expectations, and um, really be able to look at the skills I had what you had to offer and start to bring them together. And I'm still learning that, but um, yeah. that was, it was definitely a challenge, but so worth it and so fun. I think we're all still learning how to <laughs> mesh it all together. It's never over. Um, do you have any work within reach that you could show us? Um, let's see. I didn't prepare you for that. <laughs> Um, so yeah. this is a painting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that's showing up well. Uh, so that's just watercolor. Yeah. Um, and then I was gonna say I so the another thing I did, and this is you know from learning from you, is like these little bees are watercolor. Oh. All of these were I vec vectorized everything, of course, to bring it onto fabric, but they started yeah. out as watercolor. So I you know I learned how to take this kind of thing and take it to this kind of thing. Oh, it's, it's everything you do is so beautiful, Kara. Thank you. Tell us um, more. Tell us about what has happened for you in just the last few years. Um, what have you been able to do? So I, when I first took immersion, I thought I wanted to put my designs on fabric. I wanted to be licensed um, and I still do, but I, I haven't done that yet. And that's okay. What I, what I learned, and I kind of already touched on this, but was that I could take um, the things I knew how to do. And because I had this new skill set, I could do so many things with it. And it, it's both the art and the business and thinking about how you partner and interact with people. So I, um, I mean, I also took, you know, I was also in your mentorship. So that's yeah. a little crossover there. But yeah. I have started a watercolor, I call it a botanical arts membership. Yeah. Um, I have, I'm teaching a lot in person right now. Um, mm -hmm. I have some art in shows. Uh, I'm talking to some folks about how to use my art on their products. So like my whole world has kind of exploded um, in this weird, difficult time when it's hard to do that and get out in the right. world. So yeah, I, um, I oh, the other thing I was gonna say is I, you know, I've always uh, had my art on products. I made prints and cards and things like that. But one of the things I learned from, uh, from you and in Illustrator was how to take that to a whole new level. Um, yeah you know, whether it be putting a pattern behind something or um, just rethinking, taking something apart and putting it back together. So I had products in my holiday shop this year that uh, were just at a whole different level than I ever had before. Um, what, what else? I, oh, I know a fun thing. I was featured in um, Uppercase Magazine. Yes. And so that was another thing I have to say that what I, I, I mean, you might, or maybe you're going to ask this question, but just having the confidence uh, to go out and try things that I, you know, even at, even at my stage in life, I still was afraid of some of this stuff, especially with my art. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I, I just started, I did the, I took your one thing a day really to heart. And, you know, I have lists, lists of things that I can add to my one thing a day if I'm not working on a project all the time. Um, Love it. Yeah. I, I, I talk about it because it works. I do it. I remind myself all the time. I have a new big thing. And I'm like, just one thing a day. It works. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So I've just got a lot. Uh, I have a lot going on and I've at the same time learned how to um, 
pick from the 25 things that I love to do and yeah. focus on five <laughs> I love that. or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, last year I tried a lot. I took a lot of classes. I tried a lot of things. Um, and I learned a lot. And by the end of the year, it was like, okay, I can see the things that are starting to work. And I'm really going to focus in on those this year. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh. So I want to ask you what you would say. So you've done two things that on my receiving end, I get a lot of um, concerns or questions about. One of them is um, coming into this world as a fine artist. But what does that look like? Is it possible? Can you do both? Should they look the same? All those things. And then the second is um, those who feel kind of stuck in a job or perhaps like it's too late. And so could you talk about what you would tell someone in both of those situations, a fine artist who's interested, and then also maybe yourself a few years ago, what would you have told yourself? Because it is um, a big deal though you left your day job and started something brand new. So talk to us about that. Yeah, I think I'll start with the second question um, because I, I've done this a few times in my life. Um, I, none of my trajectory has been you know, normal or on track. I've always done things sort of out of order. And it started, um, I, I won't dwell on this, but when I uh, decided to go back to college, I was 28 and I had little kids. And even at that age, I thought, oh gosh, well, I'm so old to be going back to college. Yeah. Um, and then it occurred to me, I thought, well, I'm gonna be 35 whether I do this or not, you know, if it takes me that long, I, you know, I'm going to reach the next age that I think, uh, you know, I, it's going to be before I graduate uh, or so I can do it or not do it. And my choice was to do it. And so every time I think, oh, it's too late or I'm too old or it's going to take too long or whatever the thing is, it's like, well, yeah. the time's going to pass. Um, do I want to do it or not? And so you know, that I was really say, impactful. Thank you. That's such a good mindset shift around that. Yeah. Yeah. You get up every day and you do things. You, it's just yeah. a choice. Of, you know, what, what are the things you're going to do that day? Yeah. Um, and I know that um, I am in a position right now where I was able to leave my job. And I, and I know that for other people, there's, you know, the considerations, the financial considerations and all of those are very real. I mean, they were very real for me. It's not that I thought it was going to be easy. We just made yeah. the choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would just say um, the too late, you know, too late for what? That's, I don't think that's a thing <laughs> in my, in my world. It's not a thing. <laughs> too late for what? <clears throat> very good. So uh, absolutely. Um, and then in terms of being a fine artist, this to me was this amazing, it opened my world up. And I actually think my fine art has improved because of this. Mm. I think about what I can do in a completely different way now. Wow. Um, so whether it be, you know, how I paint or, what or when. So I paint a lot more now. I paint because I'm going to make patterns. So I take those skills and I do something different with it. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, just the, I, just the way that you work in Illustrator and you can move things and take things apart and reorganize, I think that's done something to my brain that I yeah. can translate back the other direction to paper. Right. I've never put that into words, but I know what you, I, you start to think in a different language, really. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm. totally. So, yeah, I, um, I know, I know the struggle and I know the frustration for watercolor artists. So I would just yeah. say like, don't expect that it's going to be the same because it's not, but it can be amazing. You can use your skills as a watercolor artist. Yeah. And really it, it's you're going to have to practice and you're going to have to there's going to be a lot of trial and error but my gosh you can do incredible things um, you know what I like to say I'm sure you've heard me say it <clears throat> but so I'm illustrative to my core um but I'm interested in fine art 
But when I go to fine art, I never anticipate making it look like an illustration, mm -hmm. right? So right. why would fine artists come and try to make an illustration look just like their fine art? So I like to think about it differently. Like what would Bonnie's fine art look like as opposed to what Bonnie's illustrative work looks like? Because it's two completely different mediums. You wouldn't expect paint and pencil to look the same either. So it's, but the creativity and the vision and the, you know, taste, all of that is there. And so what you discovered, I think is so beautiful. It's this whole other skill set that, that accompanies your fine art perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah. And like I say, it, they, they work with each other so well, you know, you can, yeah. push, you can push one or push the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me what's on the horizon for you. Do you have what's coming up? What's exciting? Um, so my plans for this year, my, my goals are um, to really grow my watercolor membership because um, I'm having so much fun with that. I love teaching. What's, what is the name of it? Flora. Flora, yes. So yeah, which in, it encompasses a community of plants. And so is what a <sighs> flora is. And so it's, you know, we're bringing that into our community. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that for sure. Um, I have, I've taken, I've taken the one thing a day and expanded it to um, one submission a month. Yes. <laughs> now I'm going to use that this year. Uh, I, I think I've put things, I, I put so many things on my calendar and I'm going to do this and they so easily move to the bottom of the list. So this year, it was no, I'm going to submit either to a magazine for a licensing deal. I'm going to submit something to someone who is not me. <laughs> um, <Yep>. <laughs> submit my work uh, once a month uh, and to um, see what happens. I have you started yet? I did. I did. Uh, I did a magazine submission that I did. I finished today. Uh, almost the end of the month, but I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I might take that. I might borrow that idea, Kara. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I think I'm gonna. Um, I'm thinking about greeting cards potentially for next month because it's again, yeah. it's not an entire fabric collection. I by the end of the year, I'm hoping to be there. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's what, those are my my two big things. And to paint, I have a lot of classes, uh, in-person classes planned for this year. And and just to paint more, make more art. You get better at making art by making art. There's only one way. <laughs> <laughs> only one way. Kara, everything you do is so beautiful. And your story is really impactful too. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, I can't wait to see the rest of this year unfold for you. Oh, thank you so much, Bonnie. I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done. You are such a light in this world and uh, you have so much to give and the amount of people that you give to and to have it still feel so personal is amazing. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>